Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So, let's be real, Blizzard kind of messed up some of the initial design elements of Battle for Azeroth, and you know what, they've pretty much said that themselves. Patch 8.2 was Blizzard's first large-scale patch that had a lot of lead time, their first proper opportunity to respond to the deeper design problems of Battle for Azeroth, instead of the immediate firefighting that they were limited to doing with Patch 8.1. Then also, based on past expansion timelines, well, this is when quite a lot of the team is like going to be shifting over to the next expansion and doing a lot of work on it. Now, combine that with the content of 8.2, and I think we can actually predict what the future of the game is going to look like from a design perspective. So today, we're going to be going through what Blizzard are moving towards and what they are moving away from. And we're going to kick it off with what I think is one of the best parts of this patch, Zone Depth. Mechagon and Najatar both have a lot more to them than Kaltaras, Zandalar, or even Argus or the Broken Shore. Now, in fairness, it wouldn't take much to pass some of those zones, but really what we've seen is quite encouraging. Things like Marty Vass's Laboratory, the Coral Ancients, the Fabius Tame, the Murloc Traders, a bunch of the rares, the more secretive elements, the just stuff like that. There's a lot more interesting stuff in these zones than what we've been used to lately. Now, combine these nice little shimmers of quality with the rest of what you end up seeing, and it's clear the Blizzards seem to be thinking more about the world of Warcraft, which uh, is a good thing, as much as there still is a long way to go. Next, though, something that they're moving away from, and that is heavily randomized rewards. They're massively moving away from this. Previously in BFA, it was about your weekly caches, your Azerite lockboxes from the Emissary, that sort of thing. And then before that, on Argus, you got a random loot token for a slot that contained a random item at a random item level. That's mad. Before that, on the Broken Shore, that was another gear token lottery. Now, were those things fun and exciting? No, I don't think so. I certainly found them to be the least motivating world content gearing progression systems in the game. Now, sure, when you look at this patch, the essences aren't perfect, they may have a few issues, but fundamentally, they are putting the Legion legendary tier effects onto direct sources with zero RNG. Now, sure, you might like the activity that an essence comes from or some elements of the essences, but I think we can all agree it's far better than the Legion Legendary Lottery. Blizzard are clearly moving away from that sort of thing, we even see it with the Benthic gear, and this leads me straight on to my next point, what Blizzard are moving towards, and that seems to be respecting players' time. It's pretty clear to me, regardless of the design wins or losses of Najatar or Mechagon, that they do respect your time as zones. Now, do I mean that the zones give you free stuff for no time put in? No, I don't mean that. But what I do mean is that the relationship between your input and the game's output is quite clear. You will get X mana pearls per day by just doing this stuff. They'll translate into Y item level upgrades per week. Do you want to push loads of gear to item level 400? Do you want to get a single bit of gear to a very high item level? Well, you go and you earn the currency and you can do with that currency whatever you want. There's no overarching Blizzard gearing plan that you're directly falling into. You can distribute the resources you earn in the way that best fulfills your own goals. Well, you know, bar the game still not having a PvP vendor, but uh, let's move away from that one. Where there was clear randomness in the past with the equivalent systems, there is now a clear deterministic system that lets you plan around it, come up with your own goals for your own character in the game, and work towards those goals. I think this is a big win, and I'm very sure it's going to perform better for Blizzard over time. And with that, there's actually something that I think you might have noticed Blizzard move away from. And that is weekly front loading. Because Najatar and Mechagon don't have those big weekly milestones in the same way that a lot of other content in the game has. Blizzard clearly decided against adding to the existing BFA crop of weekly activities as compared to, say, Argus, it's especially clear. Over in Argus, right, you got your big bursts of rewards just come from a few weekly quests that you could knock out in like an hour. This was a double-edged sword. Some people will have loved getting that quick burst of reward and not having to play all the time, but for others, they will have just felt like they have a week ahead of them where A, they feel like they have less to do, and B, the things that they can do are less time efficient as compared to the weekly, so they're not worth doing. What do we see in the new zones? Well, I think it's pretty clear what we've got instead of the weekly front loading, and that is what they're moving towards, the daily experience. Blizzard clearly are putting more thought into the daily process of playing World of Warcraft. Both of the game's two new zones do have wide-spanning achievements over weeks and weeks and weeks, but the gameplay really is heavily focused on the daily content, shifting away from those weekly meta tasks that we've seen a lot of in the past. Now, what has this resulted in? Well, I think split opinion. I think to some people, it feels like too much 
watch stuff. Likely, they wouldn't be doing that content anyway, but maybe have decided to force themselves through it to get the best bent at gear quick, so that could be a balance issue. But then on the other side of that, clearly a lot of people have found this to be very motivating and are playing a lot of the game. Now, what's this actually done for the game? Well, I think what's happened is that it's combined with the depth that those zones have. Najatar and Mechagon really do seem to be good at getting people out into the world on a daily basis, and unlike the 8.0 zones, it's a world that has a lot more stuff going on, as we covered in the depth section of this video, with the rares being more interesting, your things in the lab, loads more achievements, and just, you know, a lot of that stuff that we've already covered in this video that's really good about the two new zones. So it does seem like the increased daily participation has helped them maximize the, well, just those design elements of these two new zones, and that does bring me on to another thing, and that is cooperation. Both Mechagon and Ajatar have rares that strongly benefit from cooperation in ways that are just, you know, they're not just more damage. They feel a bit more similar to some of the rares in the Timeless Isles, like Hulon, for whom half the island would be, you know, racing over, creating somewhat of a mini event, which is a nice departure from, you know, your gulp frog farm back in the day. But even small things, like teaching players players how to summon the coral giants, or maybe the rare that involves the paint colors in Mechagon, or maybe the vault bot rare. I think those things are really fantastic. They're nice cooperative gameplay, and perhaps that's Blizzard just thinking that they really can do a lot to make the experience of running around the World of Warcraft feel more like an MMO in a sort of natural cooperative way as opposed to, say, straight-up grouping, and I think that is a good thing to have across the world. But speaking of cooperation, well, we've got the battle for Najatar. Now, this has been a mixed bag because of problems of the game's sharding system, but fundamentally, I think it's a great idea. Throughout BFA, we really have seen Blizzard begin to use war mode more and more and more, and this is really their best new example. I mean, sure, a few problems aside. And I think this means we're going to see a lot more of this happen in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, like, the game's next uh, expansion continent would have events like this going on in it, uh, even though, sure, PvP might not narratively make sense in the next expansion. But regardless, I think one thing is clear, world PvP is in. Sure, it's not for everyone, that is the case, but I do think that it can add another excellent layer of gameplay to the world, one that, combined with the deeper zones, will make the world feel a lot less lifeless, and that is a really good thing. But of course, not all events are the Battle of Najatar. We also have our next thing, Terror from the Deeps, and just the idea of events, which they might be moving towards. It was pretty cool to see a zone-wide event in Najatar, but I will admit I was let down by its scale and uh, it just being that one event. But still, things like this could be fantastic for the game if Blizzard are able to do a better job next time, and seeing them move in this direction is a nice thing. Now, they're going to need more events that have more impact in the zone. Going back to, say, even patch 5.3 of Mists of Pandaria, there was a lot that they could lift from there. Now, of course, that patch had issues, but it did have things like the caravan raiding event, the defense events, I think there was one or two others. Sure, wasn't a great patch overall, but... I think those things would really be a welcome feature in a deeper zone, one that has benefited from all the other stuff that we've talked about in this video. So hopefully this PvE event in Najatar is an indicator that Blizzard will want to do more of that in the future. But next, let's just totally change pace. Storytelling, right? The storytelling in Battle for Azeroth is, uh quite something, and there's a key difference in format between it and Legion. Now, sure, both expansions are heavily relying on their transmedia narrative content to tell their story, which I do kind of disagree with as a general way of doing things, but a key difference in BFA is what Blizzard have done with the smaller .5 patches. These patches, seemingly, as compared to the Legion counterparts, seem to be containing a heck of a lot more lore, and it seems very clear to me that Blizzard are just using this to give us a more episodic narrative, maybe giving us major plot updates every every three months. Now, is that a good thing? It's hard to tell. It certainly could be a good thing if it was applied, in my view, to a better story. Uh, I think it could work out really well. After all, if they can use this format to increase their narrative screen time, it uh, could do good things. And sure, so far we've only seen this in patch 8.1.5 with its narrative stuff, 8.2.5 hasn't came out yet, but I think from looking at the story of 8.2, knowing where 8.3 is probably going to go, 8.2.5 clearly has a lot of work that it's going to have to do. 
But let's move on to something totally different the Blizzard are moving towards, and that is a shift in reward design philosophy. You see, between Nazjatar and Mechagon, we've got quite a lot more in the way of character progression that's not tied to item level. The mounts this time are a bit more involved. The rares are a bit more involved. On the whole, it does seem like Blizzard are trying to fulfill more of the RPG fantasy there. There's more to do along more axes of progression than there has been in the past with BFA, with the zone meta mounts, I think, being far superior to what we've seen recently, and then things like the paint jobs, the vinyls, the Mechagon blueprints to collect. Again, it's not perfect, but directionally, it's a step forward from what was quite dull and unmotivating in 8.0 to what I think now is a lot more compelling. And really, not all players are driven by item level. I think there's an emotional connection to one's character, and I think that is what drives a lot of why people play the game you know, the other things aside from item level they want to collect. That's the type of thing the Blizzard, in my view, have been missing out on big time lately. And when you look at 8.2, I think, uh, sure, maybe it's tier sets visually flat, but they're doing a lot more in that regard, and it's a lot better. And then the final part of that is that a lot of it is overlapping progression, which I think generally is just a lot more satisfying when you're playing it. Next, though, more interesting gear. Blizzard have continued their Crucible of Storms gearing experiment with the inclusion of... A lot. Benthic effects, Mechagon punch cards, the unique effects from the Eternal Palace gear, as well as the logic loops from Operation Mechagon. Now, it's a balancing nightmare, sure, right? But I think it's more enjoyable for the average player, and maybe a bit more than just the average player. And we really have to decide in what we want here as a community. Do we want a perfectly balanced esportsy game with massive design restrictions, or do we want a game that is, you know, having more interesting gear that's a bit harder to balance? And my personal take might be a bit more controversial here. Mythic Raiders are a tiny percentage of the player base, and the game can't be designed around them primarily. World of Warcraft should not be an MMO esport. World of Warcraft should be an MMO RPG, as much as media hype might try to push it in the other direction. And while we're on that topic, let's just talk about gameplay. Blizzard do appear to be pushing in the direction of giving players more impactful gameplay decisions. Now, look, essences can't fix the class design problems, but to think that they would is, I believe, unrealistic. The next opportunity for a class overhaul is 9.0, and I do not say that snarkily. I get the class problems, and I agree that they are a valid reason to not play the game if they're that much of an issue. I totally agree with that. But still, for what they are, the essences are pretty good. Rather than being a fix to class design, I see them more as being like the Legion Legendaries, but with no RNG and a bit deeper customization. Let's be real, if the Legion Legendary effects worked like these essences, Legion would have been a better expansion in terms of its gameplay. Now, what the essences do show us is that Blizzard are giving us interesting choices, ways to customize our character. Now, sure, there'll be a BIS for different scenarios, but broadly speaking, the essences allow you to combine, uh, well, you know, your essence choices with your talent tree to create a highly tailored build. And I do think that giving yourself more options in that regard is interesting character progression. So what's this going to mean for the next expansion? Well, Blizzard seem to be wary of external character progression. You know, things like the artifacts and stuff like that. They've talked about how they didn't really anticipate how badly the, you know, just how bad it would feel moving from Legion into BFA in terms of your character's, like, capabilities. So overall, that does mean it's hard to know exactly what they'll do. Personally, I think they're going to put a lot more back into the classes. I wouldn't be surprised if they undid some of the GC changes, and I think we're going to get something like the essences that just exists for the for, for the duration of the next expansion, but with the base classes being added to and, you know, not being taken away from, like we saw from Legion into BFA. Now, moving on, all of this leaves me with one question. When you look at this patch, is the zone variation their ideal design, or is it a test? And more broadly speaking, to what degree is this entire patch just an A-B test? While 8.2 retains issues from 8.0 and 8.1, I think it's fair to say that many of its uh, ideas are very different. So, could this just mean we'll get dual zones in future patches? Dragon Isles and Nihilotha? Indeed, if you got the designs of both Mechagon and Najatar and squeezed them into the same zone, it would be muddled and overcomplicated. It would be a jumbled zone without a clear gameplay identity. Alternatively, they could be doing a test, though. Do players prefer a more sandbox-like theme park? as we see with Mechagon, or do they prefer a typical WoW patch zone, albeit one with a good bit more depth, like with Najatar? 
Whatever their plan is, I'm fairly sure the Blizzard are going to be paying a lot of attention to this, and given the timelines of development, I think they're going to be incorporating a lot of what they learn here into the next expansion, for it's almost certainly like having its zones being mapped out like as we speak. So what's the takeaway here now that we've really went through most of this patch? Well, I think you can see the Blizzard are moving away from many things that players have not liked in the past. Not everything has been a clear win right? I, I don't think everything's been a clear win, but I think their ultimate intention here seems to have been to listen and respond. Ultimately, this patch was pretty darn late in the cycle, so it seems like they decided to be a little bit more reactive and design this around the issues of 8-0 instead of just plowing ahead with their existing plan. So I don't think we can extrapolate from this patch that, you know, WoW is totally 180 and all of its problems are solved or anything like that, but I do think we can say that this is a big move in the right direction. It just depends if they stay the course. And really, it's just on Blizzard to think hard about the lessons that they've learnt and to work them into the fundamentals of the next expansion so that 9.2 is not left having to fix the problems of 9.1 and 9.0, just like 8.2 has been left having to fix the problems of 8.0 and 8.1. So with that, let me know, what do you think about this patch? What do you think about how this patch is influencing the design of the game moving forward? And what parts of this patch would you like to see be incorporated into the fundamentals of the game? And just broadly, how would you like the fundamentals to change in 9.0? I would love to hear that. So there you go. That is it for me. Let me know what you thought about these topics down below. And with that, I will see you next time.